Hey everybody, I'm back. I didn't die. Thank you, Canadian Healthcare System. So, as I mentioned in my previous video, I went for shoulder surgery. Now, I don't know the technical name of what they did to me. I was explained this, but I was halfway into the anesthetics kicking in, so I don't recall. But basically, they made it so, or at least I hope, that my shoulder won't be dislocating itself randomly anymore. Again, I'm hoping for that. As you can see, I'm not at my house. This is my mother's house. I'm gonna be living with her for the next couple of weeks because I can't really do much for myself. I'm a right-handed guy and I can't really cook. I can't clean. It's even hard to have a shower now. It's, it, there are trying times for me. Who would have thought that I actually needed my right arm that much? So there's very little that I can do for myself right now other than play video games. Now, of course, a lot of video games won't work so well because obviously, but there are a few games that still work really well with just one hand. One game that I've been addicted to right now and I found out is actually playable with just one Joy-Con is Stardew Valley, which I took so long to get into and now I am addicted to it. I am sure that if I ever stop playing Stardew Valley and I pick it up again like a year from now, it's gonna bring very vivid memories of my recovery right now because that's all I do all day long is play Stardew Valley. On top of some other games that I can also play with one hand. And Stardew Valley being a game that is basically endless and the fact that I'm a pretty casual gamer myself and that I don't really sit down to get all the achievements, to get all the trophies, to unlock everything and see all the endings. I'm a pretty casual gamer. I sit down and I play games and I have fun with them, but then I'm able to move on even if I haven't finished the game. And when I look back on my gaming career, for lack of a better word, I realized there are a lot of games I didn't actually beat. And I was thinking about that today and I was wondering if you guys are the same way and what games were like that for you, a game that you loved, but didn't actually love enough to get to the very end. When I think of games that I love but then beat, well, it's a pretty big list actually because again, I don't set out to beat a lot of games. If I can get some 10 or 15 hours worth of entertainment out of a game before I just lose interest, to me it was money well spent. I And I know this is not, like in a lot of gaming subreddits I spend some time on, people have this natural tendency to dislike the comparison between the money you spent on a game and how many hours of entertainment that game provided you with. with and, and I totally understand why. Just because you were busy with a game doesn't necessarily mean you had a great time, but I am a, a value guy. If, if I put in X dollars for a game and I get more entertainment out of that price of admission than say a movie theater, to me that's money well spent. So that's the thing. I don't really set out to beat games as much as I just want to have some fun in that little virtual world that the developers created for me. So there are three specific games that I loved, both the concept, the execution, the gameplay, everything about it, and played quite a bit of, but never actually got around to beating them. And I mean, considering that I really can't do anything right now, perhaps now is the time to finally get that done. So here's my three games that I loved so dearly, but never actually got around to beat. First off, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Now, Heroes of Might and Magic is a series that has never been as popular as, say, your Call of Duties or your Warcraft, but I know that this series has a very dedicated fan base. I mean, I really should know I am one of them. I first played this game back when uh, CD burners were starting to become popular in Brazil. Back then, we were big on IRC, which is apparently coming back now, but there were some guys on IRC back then who offered CD burning services. And basically what you would do is they would send you a list with games and you would pick as many games as would fit in one disc, which was, I believe, 650 megabytes. And then you'd send off the list, they would burn the CD and deliver it to your home. Now again, we're talking about Brazil in the 90s. Everything is so expensive in Brazil. Games were no different. And this was really the only way a lot of us could experience these games. I'm not condoning piracy, I'm just telling you how it was. So I got one of these, I saved some money and I got a hold of one of these guys who burned uh, pirated games. And I sent off my list and I remember there was some there were some classics there like the first Grand Theft Auto, Age of Empires, Warcraft 2 I think, and Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I was a seasoned veteran in the second game in the series, Heroes of Might and Magic 2. And I played a demo of the third one and I'm like, he has that on his list of little pirated games, which 
Side note, I have no idea where people pirated games back then because we're talking about 1997 or 8, so people were using dial-up, especially in my region of the country. So it, it, must have it must have taken him so long to download these games if that's how they were getting them off of some crazy Russian server or whatever. Anyway, Heroes of Might and Magic, in case you're unfamiliar, is a mix between turn-based strategy, tactical strategy, and RPG. You have these heroes, you have multiple of these heroes, and you have this map, this medieval fantasy map, and you have a little castle, and you gather resources like any other strategy game, and you use those resources to recruit new units and buy new stuff for your castle, new uh, building types that will in turn unlock new units for you to create a little army, and each town had its own building types and units. So you had the human town, you had the elf town, you had the uh, undead town and part of the fun of the game at least for me was trying to capture all different types of towns to recruit their best units and end up rushing the enemy the final enemy in the map that you're playing in with an army comprised of basically the top picks from each town I just played skirmish maps I would pick the biggest one I could find in the list in the game and I would just have this long ass save game of like some I don't know 10 15 hours and once I beat that map, that was it. I stopped playing for a little while, I'd go back to it next week and do it again and again. I don't think I ever played the campaign mode for more than five minutes. I'm not even curious about the story, to be honest with you. For me, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 was entirely about the gameplay. I could not care less about the story. Another game I loved, in fact, the entire series really, is Advance Wars, both the games on the GBA and the DS titles. Yes, even Days of Ruin, even though they kind of went really weird with the theme and the presentation and it turned a lot of fans off, I still love that one because again, I'm about gameplay more than anything else. Advanced Wars is a long-running Nintendo series that actually started on the Famicom in the 80s and in North America, we only got the GBA and DS titles. The game is a turn-based tactical strategy that you're probably more familiar through Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics. It's that kind of gameplay, but with a different flavor, let's say. Whereas those games are more kind of medieval fantasy, Advance Wars is a cartoony, quote unquote, real life war. And I say real life because we have planes and ships and tanks and things like that, as opposed to dragons and wizards. The game is incredibly charming. There's so much for you to do outside of the main campaign, which is why I played so much of it. Just like with Heroes of Mind and Magic, I would load up a random map, just a random skirmish map, and then play until I lost, which was the usual result because even though I played these games for so long, I'm not very good at any of the games I'm mentioning here. There's something about that chess-like gameplay where you have a grid and you have a bunch of units and you're trying to figure out what's the range of those units, what's the best move to make, what maximizes your chances of winning, and just like with chess, getting really frustrated when you realize you made the wrong move. There's something about that type of gameplay that really appeals to me. And Advanced Wars gets right to the point in that unlike Heroes of Might and Magic, there's no town management, there's no resource gathering, it's just straight up the missions. And I enjoy both approaches for what they are. I like Heroes of Might and Magic because I like that more strategy style gameplay where you're kind of managing your town and you know coming up with resources, building this or that, should I build this now or should I build this later? I love that, but I also love just getting right to brass tacks, just getting to kicking ass in Advanced Wars. I bought my first 3DS in 2013 because I was so sure that we would see an Advanced Wars title for the 3DS and both Nintendo and Intelligent Systems really dropped the ball on that one. We got plenty of Fire Emblems, I know, but I just can't get into Fire Emblem and believe me, I have tried. I own every single one of them and I played for maybe three minutes. I just can't get into it. I just don't, I'm not a fan of the fantasy thing with the exception of Heroes of Might and Magic because I can't find that gameplay anywhere else. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe there's some indie gem on Steam right now that it's like Heroes of Might and Magic but with a modern twist but I keep my ear to the ground when it comes to games like Heroes of Might and Magic. I have never heard of anything like that. I think that series is pretty unique in its gameplay. And finally, the Phoenix Wright series. There was a time in my life when I actually thought I wanted to be a lawyer. And when somebody on some gaming forum told me that there is actually a lawyer simulator 
for the DS, I was blown away. The game is a visual novel, which is not really my cup of tea, but the theme and the art style, the presentation, the characters, Phoenix Wright just oozes charisma and charm that I'm able to look past the fact that that's not even a type of gameplay that really appeals to me. The games play out like a murder mystery where you have cases, criminal cases of somebody who killed somebody else, somebody's being wrongfully accused, and you have to prove their innocence in court against increasingly more difficult prosecutors. The game plays a lot like point-and-click adventure classics, a genre that was huge in the 90s, died out in the early 2000s, saw a resurgence recently, and then it seems like it's on its way out again. And I get it. It's not like you can replay these games forever. They lose their novelty the moment you beat them because it becomes just memorization. I will still play The Dig or Full Throttle and have a blast playing those games, but unless you forgot how to beat the puzzles, it's a one-hour experience for the most part. Not only that, but I find that these games really were better suited for a time when you couldn't as easily look up walkthroughs and things like that. Those games, you'd be stuck on them for months on end because not only you couldn't just easily go on the internet to look up how to exit a certain area, but also they were pretty niche. So even gaming magazines often didn't cover these games. I was stuck on Full Throttle for like a good three months until I overheard in school some kid explaining to some other kid how you get past a certain area. You probably noticed that all of these games are pretty playable with just one hand. So since I'm kind of having to take a forced break, I can't really do anything else but play video games and watch Netflix. Perhaps, like I said in the beginning, now is the time to finally beat these games. But I pass the question off to you. What are games that you absolutely love, but for some reason just never beat, and why? I wonder if there are people amongst my little audience here that are kind of the same way as me. You're into downloading the game, and you play it for a little bit, and then you're done. Like, it's like the fast food approach to gaming. If, if that makes any sense. I'm really in the mood for some Advanced Wars. I'll play for half an hour. I'm, I'm good, I can move on. Is anybody else like that? Am, am I wasting these games? Because a lot of my friends, when I tell them about this, they, they tell me that I'm wasting these games, basically. They're waste, or rather, they're wasted on me. How do you guys feel about that? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, follow me on social media. I'm very active there. I love to hear back from you guys. Let me know where you're watching these videos from. I'm always very curious about that myself. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.